the, the record cover, the album cover, was something that only really existed from 1967 to like 1982. Because after Sergeant Pepper, the Beatles Sergeant Pepper, suddenly everyone said, I see we gotta we gotta pay attention to the cover. We we can't just stick ourselves, a picture of ourselves on the cover. We've got to have some kind of piece of artwork or something that has any meaning. So all through the 70s, the idea of just sticking a photograph of yourself on a cover was like, you know, a bit naff. But by about 1982, so, so if you imagine back then, the only connection you have with the artists, unless you just happen to go to see them live, was the cover. And the record company, when, when a bit of music was finished, record album was finished, the first question was, what's the cover? And that's all really you got. You got the cover and you had the music. There's no MTV, no, you know, no YouTube. You couldn't check them out any other way. So your only connection really with the with the music was this cover, which then had a lot more meaning to it or significance than than like by 1982, once the record, once music was finished, the question was, okay, what's the video? And then by 1985, when CDs came in, forget it, forget about it. There's no point in even trying to make anything significant as the cover. And that little slew of Jamaican music in the 70s that we're going to go through all came about because it started, of course, with Bob Marley. But Chris always wanted a reggae superstar a Jamaican music superstar. And he started off with Jimmy Cliff and made that movie, The Heart of the Cup, right? And he was hoping he was going to be a star, but he never really went anywhere particularly. But then, and then Bob came along and he had his new, he, he thought, okay, it's going to be, this is going to be my star. So starting with that, we started where he basically said, let's try and make some really great covers for all this Jamaican music that would otherwise just be in brown paper packages, you know? There should be a brown paper package stamp on Rico. So, so this was a whole idea of bringing Jamaican music into the mainstream or maybe even more. And for me, it was great because rather than just being a bit of rock music that didn't have any particular or dance music, all this music was either religious or political. It had a purpose, had a meaning, you know. It had a, um, a story behind it. So each of these Jamaican covers, each of, each of these acts, well, I had to find a different look that was appropriate for them. How did the whole concept for the artwork of Man From Warica come about? you're starting off with one that's kind of towards the end, because then at that point I'm thinking, okay, Rico. And you sit down with Rico and you say, what do you think, what do you want on your cover? And he's just kind of looking at you like, my cover, what do you mean? You know, never heard of such a thing. No one's ever asked me this. I don't know, what do you think? You know? So I, at that point I thought, okay, what's a, what's a look? And I thought Coptic art, because Coptic art, the Copts were the original, Ethiopian Christians that you could say were the beginning of Rastafarian, you know, all the way back to Haile Selassie in Ethiopia. So I thought I'd do, um, what does Coptic art look like? What did they make? And that's what the uh, Rico things are. They're really Coptic art, you see, with all this decorative stuff and everything. And if you look, if you go on the internet and you say, okay, Coptic art, you'll see, yeah, images kind of like that that were made a thousand years ago, you see? And that's that's what they were. And this is the first one I did. And we got Haile Selassie is here. And, and um, Rico's here in this procession. It's supposed to look like there is a thousand years ago, you know? And I love doing that so much. I did a second one and there was no second Rico album. <laughs> right? There was no second Rico um, record, but in the second one, the as I say, was never used. There's Rico in the middle. So they come forward and there's Rico in the middle playing with heavenly spotlights on and Selassie 
is sitting on his throne watching Rico. Okay, Super 8. I, I tell you, Super 8 was another one like Rico that I did the first one. So that is Chris's idea. He said, would you do a, you know, make a character called Super 8? So I did. I mean, it's easy enough, kind of obvious, do a kind of cartoon, the croaking lizard. It says roast fish, roots, cornbread, maca. <laughs> um, but I loved it. When I'd done that one, I thought, oh, God, I could do it better than that. And I did. And I said, can we do more Super Apes? And Chris said, I'd love to do a whole series of Super Apes. So I did a piece of artwork for Super Ape 2, a piece of artwork for Super Ape 3, and I liked them far better than the original cover. The, the, one of them was really, I thought it was great. Kind of he's on the top of a volcano just exploding. And the technique, the, the style is slightly different to that, not quite so far more cartoony, but really, anyway, it's great. And, um, but of course the records never came. Because I did see the original Jamaican uh, cover, and it said Super Ape, but it was like the image of a lion. Oh, I see. So that means he, well, he probably then called himself Super Ape. He was a bit nutty. <laughs> yeah. But he, apparently he didn't like, he didn't mind. He, he quite liked the Super Ape because when I, he, he would have, when I did, when I met, Lee Perry and said, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was, he was, he was okay with the color. He liked the color. And staying on the Lee Perry side of things, the Police and Thieves album cover. That cover is like, for me, really significant thing. And maybe not of any significance to you in, in the same way, but I thought the first thing about it was it illustrated exactly the way we worked in the 70s and how Chris and I worked. Because I was, went into the island office and I was talking to a guy called Leslie that actually owns, because I gave it to him, the original Rico. So can I have that Rico? And I said, oh God, take it. You know, I didn't want to give it away, but I did. Um, and I was in there talking to him because he'd been made the product manager for War in a Babylon. And I was talking to him about War in a Babylon because it had to be a discussion because what he wanted were, as in his words, Rasta brothers with machine guns mowing down white people in Kingston. That's what he wanted on the cover. Exactly. <laughs> Which I knew, you know, sorry. Okay, how do I get around this one? Anyway, so I was talking to him and I saw Blackpool from come across and he walked by and I went like this. He says, Hi, Tone, I got this great little, great little song, Police and Thieves. Ah, oh, okay. That was the meeting, right? Because by the, as he passed behind me, I went, oh, I see it and I saw it. So that's how, that's, that was a meeting in the 1970s of how to come up with this cover, Police and Thieves. And you can imagine, and I know, if you sat down with marketing people and things, you'd never get anything done. That's the only way you get anything done, like that, bam, done. And so the second thing, so that's a meeting in 1970s. Click, done. The second thing is how interesting it came up in my brain, because I've never done anything like that. But immediately I saw this image in my brain. I said, oh yeah, no, that's good. And as I walked to my car, I thought, you know, you should maybe note that down because you'll forget it by the time you're home. And a kind of voice said to me, not a voice, I'm just saying my own brain said, no, 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 you got that, it's there. In 60 years time, which was probably about now, you'll still be able to bring that image up and copy it straight out of your brain. So that was the second thing I thought, that's very interesting, how the brain works. But then the third thing about how the brain works is I could look at that image and no one else would know. No one in the world would know. But I know there are five different styles of work of different artists 
over some of it 60 years old. I mean, back then, 60 years old. And you were the five different styles that made that image. And uh, I realized the brain in split second, just like they're now touting artificial intelligence can do and we can't, but you can, we can. In, in a split second, my brain had gone brrr, those five images and made it into that image. You know? And I, I got home, I just copied it. You know what I'm and I think, how on earth did I come up with that? If I'd sat down to design that, I would never be able to design it. I would never be able to draw that. I wouldn't come up with it because I'd be thinking. A couple of years later, Clash came to me and asked me to do work with them because of the police and thieves, which they'd have only seen because of the cover. And so I'm, I go back to, again, what I started this whole conversation with. The covers in then had purpose. That is exactly how Nassau Bahamas policemen dressed in like 1972. And I, I was, uh, I remember speeding through Nassau and one of these guys stopped me and tried to be serious with me. And I thought, how the hell can you take a guy serious that's, that's dressed <laughs> in little white shorts and little white shoes, you know, right? How could you take him seriously? <clears throat> and this guy was, um, this this guy was wanted to really punish me, you know, kid of 22, I'm going to tell you off and everything. And um, let me tell you, it was funny. Because he really showed me off, you know, he couldn't do anything because I, I had an English driving license and everything. And I had to go and see as the representative of Island Records at that point, a band who called themselves Nassau, who were a kind of Las Vegas type singing band that would sing in the hotels there and black and asked blackwell would he release a record and blackwell is very very difficult for blackwell to say no he just has to say yes so i was in nasser he said can you go and see this guy and so i went up to nambia village to a little house and knocked on the door for the lead singer to come and the lead singer came to the door opened the door with a sparkly t-shirt, Nassar, and all done up and everything. And it was the policeman. Poor guy, but I did the best for him anyway. I forgave him. Every illustration for an album cover that I've seen, personally, I have not seen one that I loved as much as Warren of Babylon. I'm very, very pleased to hear. Leslie, can you do this image of this street fighting? And... Um, my family goes back like 400 years as Quakers, Society of Friends, pacifists. So I didn't even know what the, record, the rest of the record company said, but I knew no way can I do that. And so I made an illustration for it, nice big picture for it, to show him what that would look like. And I had all these rascal guys with, <laughs> I did it and it could have been an album cover. And they all had, um, you know, balloons coming out saying, take that, you pants, you know, and everything, you know. And I went, that's what it will be, Leslie. And um, you can't do it. And I said, I'll go back and I'll do what I would do. And I just thought I'll make an anti-war thing instead of a pro-war thing, you know, war in a Babylon. What happens when you have war? And I didn't know if anyone would use it or anything. But once I've got a little, as I've said about these things, once I've got a little idea in my head or I can see an image, I would do it anyway. And if I take it in and say, look, that's what I would do, and say, well, we don't like it. You say, fine, never mind. Because I would have done it anyway, you see. Which is a, which is a problem for anyone these days because no one can work like that. You have to be paid these days. In those days, money, life just did not cost. No one of your generation or younger than you could possibly imagine the different financial structure of living in England in the 70s and living today. Like the house I was living in, in London, my parents gave me £5,000 to buy something when I left home. £5,000 bought you a Mercedes-Benz and it bought you a house. 
and it was like five minutes away from where Ireland was. I had no idea what Ireland Records was. I, mean, I bought it long before. Just moved in there with my girlfriend and we went to art school. And um, but that's all it was, the cost of a car. But that house today is over a million dollars. So the idea that your parents would give you a million dollars to buy a house as a student, forget about it. But $5,000, 5,000 pounds wasn't really that much money. That's how much money Chris gave the Whalers when they came into the office because they were stranded in Sweden. And um, someone he said, what can we do? And he said, go and see this guy, Chris Blackwell in London, because he, he, he will help you maybe. He can probably help you get back to Jamaica and give you some money. And, that, and he, when they walked in, they walked in just the perfect moment to walk in because he'd given up on Jimmy Cliff in a way. And he said when they walked in, they looked like kings. And it was Peter Tosh, of course, who would look like a king, because that's how he, Peter Tosh, you know, Bob, Bob did not come off as a king, but Peter Tosh did, you know. And he gave them 5,000 pounds to get back to Jamaica and said, uh, make a record. Money didn't, money, money wasn't, you know, nowadays you'd have to be paid anyway. So I just had this image of an anti-war woman that everyone else is dead, children are dead. And so I made this kind of anti-war Madonna. If you look at uh, Renaissance paintings, all the Madonnas, it's all in a kind of um, triangle. And if you look at that, she's a triangle. And um, my girlfriend, we just posed pictures for her, you know, drawing things and said, hold that, hold that rag a bit tighter, you know, right? I was thinking about that after, after talking to you before. I thought, it's really stupid. You do these things and they're really stupid because the rag she was holding that I was drawing from, was a tea towel, right? That was red and white checks. And it just never went into my mind that, well, it's red and white checks, that's okay. And I was thinking yesterday after we're speaking, how much better it would be if that piece of cloth she was holding was just pure red. Because then it would have been blood. But no, it was a tea cloth. <laughs> so that was kind of stupid. But it's the only red bit, it's the only color on the, on the um, image, isn't it? So um, the only, only color on the, on the thing. And again, it's done the same way as I was telling about Ijuman, that it's oil paint, but it's all just gray, one color, no work. Just do it gray and then color in on top with a, with a layer of very thin layer of oil paint of blue, very thin layer of oil paint of, you know, yellow ochre. And the uh, the little red thing, why leave it red, you know? And it wasn't because I was thinking blood or anything else, but it's like that Francois Truffaut film, you know? I think it's called The Red Balloon. But it's kind of anti-war film and it, it is black and white. And the little girl goes through the scene the whole time holding a balloon and it's red and it's the only thing in the film. and. That is something that various filmmakers have used again and again. But that, that's why I thought, oh, yeah, keep that one thing rare, that would be good. So yes, she's just uh, an anti-war Madonna. That really amazes me because I've always wondered if it was something that you saw with your own eyes, because it really does capture the political climate in Jamaica at the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Again, buying the full album cover, you can mm -hmm. spot all the little details. And one of the things I didn't notice uh, at the beginning was the torn up fence in the background. Oh, you didn't? Oh, no, right. Yeah. I think it's actually a very good painting. If that was done at any other time in the history of the world where people actually painted pictures of things, I think it would be a striking painting. Except, of course, it wouldn't have the top of the author. But yes, I think it's a striking painting. But I wouldn't necessarily expect it to 
Well, the fact that you're saying that communicated actually, that's then that's fantastic that it communicated. I mean, I never talk to people much about any of this stuff. I don't think anyone's ever asked me actually about war and about Babylon particularly. But anyway, it's great that, that that thing. But you see, you see the 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 um triangle and straight through the middle of the thing. And but I do have, yeah, I do have to say that's one that Chris Blackwell came in and said, I'm having that one. And off it went. So he has the original? He gave it away to uh I think Natalie Delon who was this movie actress, French movie actress. He was with for a while, was his girlfriend for a while. Then she died, so God knows who has it now. Back in the 70s, there was no art department in England. <clears throat> and uh, it was just, you know, Roxy Music would do their own covers. Robert Palmer did his own covers. And, um, you know, I was doing these kind of things, or maybe, you know, other, other things. And I always used, or the company used outside design firms that would put together the back, type, barcodes. And I could never stand to put on type on an art, a piece of art. I mean, I had this piece of art, and all I cared about was getting it back, which I didn't. I couldn't stand. If I put that type on, it would be teeny type. It would be like Max Romeo, right? And then I gave it to a company called Eckford and Simpson said, what will you put on this, you know? And they did war in a Babylon. Went, oh God, okay. You know, with something like this, it was easy because it would fit into this third world that fitted into the thing. So I could do that. I could imagine that. But again, I imagine. I did the Iron Man, and actually, right. what, they they did this. They they act for the Simpson. They they made this tie, and actually, it's very very nice the way it kind of flows into this artwork. They were very very good. 